So Desi's child's writing on the wall is 25 years old, which is crazy because it doesn't seem like it's that long ago. So while I'm putting together like Beyonce's top three albums, if you combine it with Destiny's Child, I have uh, her debut album, Dangerously, Dangerously in Love, number one. I have uh, Writing on the Wall, number two, and I have Lemonade, number three. Now, people will say, you know, people will say, well, yeah, man, you don't have Lemonade at number one. Listen, Lemonade is great. Conceptually, it's a great album. Fantastic. But man, that debut album, Dangerously in Love, was a hit maker. Crazy in Love, Baby Boy, Me, Myself, and I. Oh. Album was so good. It was a hit maker. A hit maker. I still listen to that album today, even though that album kind of followed the A. Marie model. But that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> but yeah, that Beyonce debut album was great. But let's talk about the number two album. So, Writing on the Wall was their second album, and that too was a hit maker. It had Bills, 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 which they all look good in that video. Um, jumping, Jumping, uh, Say My Name, and Bugaboo. And that album, if you have a kid, a young person has said, Papa, what was 1990 like? I don't know why I'm talking a British accent, but uh, <laughs> give them that album because that album had some of the best producers of that time, that time period. Um, you had um, Rodney Jerkins, uh, Missy was on that album, I think. Um, Shakespeare and Candy Burris was on that album. Um, hmm, who else? There's somebody. Oh, yeah, Rodney Jerkins. Rodney Jerkins, uh, if, if, who was the, probably the king of production at that point that whole late 90s period anyway was interesting um because like i said you had shakespeare and candy you had missy and timbaland the neptunes just started to blow up at that point we had rodney jerkins so it was a great time period and it was in between neo soul part one and neo soul part two part one was d'angelo and eric badu and maxwell so Desi's child came out a little bit around that time a little bit after that time and they caught that wave right before Neo Soul Part 2, where you had Floetry and Jill Scott and Music Soul Child and Bilal. So music and R&B, man, that was that was just a great, no matter if it's Neo Soul or just R&B, that was a wonderful time period. Like, I, I just wish this era was kind of close to that. It's kind of, sort of, maybe, but it, 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 that, the, the production and the writing was so rich around the just the 90s period in general, but that late 90s period was really underrated. So if you're talking about the 25th anniversary of the writing on the wall, we also have to talk about the 20th anniversary of Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robinson being kicked out of the group, which was a shocker because Bills, Bills, Bills come out and you see them. I was like, OK, they look good. But then you get to Say My Name, which is also a great song. And then it's like, well, where's Latoya and Latavia? Well, who's that chick? Well, who's this other chick? <laughs> like, who are these two chicks? And he's like, OK, the, the, the new the, the new girls are uh, the joining Beyonce uh, and Kelly was uh, uh, Michelle Williams and Farrah Franklin. And it's okay. Yeah, Michelle looked all right. But Farrah, Farrah looked nice. Like, I remember in the barbershops, dudes were saying, you know, Farrah wasn't there that long. They said, well, who, who looks better, Beyonce or Farrah? And people today like, oh, how, that's impossible. And nobody looks better than Beyonce. Dude, <laughs> there was a debate. <laughs> Listen, Beyonce is always Beyonce. When they came out, when they first came out with No, 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 and they did the remix, now she's supposed to be like 18 years old. They also be like teenagers, but it's like Beyonce, like she's like 28 years old. So Beyonce was always Beyonce. She was a golden goddess. But Pharaoh was nice. But depending on the situation, who you believe, they said one, that Pharaoh was missing appointments, so they kicked her out. And Pharaoh said it was because of Matthew Knowles. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it was a slight debate. You know, Pharaoh was nice. She was nice. But we also, yeah, but we also have to, but let's go back to Latavia and Latoya. So, the story goes, uh, Latavia, Latavia and Latoya told Matthew Knows they wanted their own manager. And I feel like that's rightfully so. Um, Matthew Knows is, was the manager from day one. Like, they all started off in school together, you know, um, with Destiny's Child, and they blew up. So it made sense that he was the manager of the group. But also, his daughter is the lead singer. And Kelly... Is like Beyonce's sister. So no matter what happens in that group, Matthew was always going to look out for Beyonce and Kelly. He should look out for all of them. But Latoya and Latavia, Latavia, uh, Latoya and Latavia knows that Matthew is always going to look out for his daughter one and Kelly two. So if you're them, you probably should have your own representation just to make sure everything's on the up and up. From Matthew knows point of view, I can understand him saying like, hey, I'm the manager of this group. 
if you bring somebody else in, it might rock the boat and we're going to have infighting. So it doesn't make any sense for you to bring somebody else in. But I can understand why Latoya and Latavia felt that way. And I don't think they should have been fired. Like, I don't think they should have been let go over this. Like, there should have been some type of happy ending to this. But they got kicked out. And Beyonce at that point, you know, I'm sure she she probably didn't like it. But she wasn't going to push her dad. Like, that's her dad. Like, Beyonce was still, like, 19, 18, 19, 20 years old. Like, you, you know, she wasn't at a point where she could say, like, dad, don't do this. You know, not, not at that point. Later on, sure, because, you know, she replaced him as her, as her manager. But she was older by that point. But um, but she could have she stopped it, maybe. But I don't know. So they're on a TV one, they have a show called, um, what's that show? Uh, Uncensored, where uh, LaToya, she didn't talk about Desi's shop much, but she was talking about how it was tough for her because she couldn't escape them. Like, I think she said she moved out of Houston just to get away from them, but she couldn't. Like, she, you leave the group that you started with with, with your friends and they continue to, to get bigger and you're gone. Um, they had it, they had it really mess her up and financially you know she you know it was it was bad like beyonce is off <laughs> beyonce and kelly is off with these new chicks and the and the toy and the tape is trying to figure these things out so it, it was tough so go be sure to check out that uh that episode of uh, uncensored with latoya like it is it's pretty good so i guess in 2023 beyonce had a tour stop in houston and they all came back together it was latoya latavia uh kelly michelle Without Farah, <laughs> without Farah, um, but they seem they they I don't I, can, I, don't, I, can, I don't I can't remember if they were on stage together or behind I think I think they did I think they took photos backstage but I think they were on stage together, and I think that fans was probably hoping that they would get back together and I, th- I do too I think I think when you get older because everybody now is in their forties, and when you get older you see people pass away, and the last thing you want to do is not resolve things from the past. Um, before everybody gets old or, 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 or before someone unexpectedly dies. You know, I, I look at um, Diana Ross and, and Mary Wilson. Like, I always felt like they sh- they missed the opportunity of doing a residency or going on a tour where they talked about the Supremes and sang songs. But, you know, Diana was the boss and she wanted boss stuff and Mary wasn't having it and it just never worked out. You know, if Diana was more, if, Di- if Miss Ross was more Diane than Diana, her and Mary could have had a really nice thing going for the last few years of Mary's life, but now Mary's passed away and it'll never happen. And I don't want this to happen to Destiny's Child. Like, I think they're okay, but it'd be nice to see if they had like a like a documentary talking about this album or just early Dis- early Destiny's Child and bring them all together and and discuss the whole time period. Because I think, I think there's a lot of things that Latoya and Latavia probably want to talk about and discuss that back then they didn't have an opportunity to. And maybe they discussed it behind the scenes. I don't know. But as a, as a fan, it would be nice to see them discuss what exactly happened back then, what they all went through. Uh, even for Michelle, like Michelle coming in, she's replacing people that was the original members that and, and two women that people loved. You know, it's, you know, it's, it, had, it had to be tough on her. You know, and even with, when you look at the group, like, you know, Beyonce has always won, you know, but, you know, you always had your favorites. Like, if you didn't like Beyonce, you had Kelly. If you didn't have Kelly, you had Latoya. Like, you had Latoya, you had Latavia. Like, they were they were all good-looking women. It wasn't just because it wasn't just Beyonce and, the, and a group of girls. Like, they were nice. So, so yeah, so it would have been nice to have them sit down and discuss the past and hash things out. Because I think it would be very cleansing. It would be very therapeutic. And it would be also be nice if they made another Destiny's Child album. Like, I think... I think Beyonce has one more Destiny's Child album in her before she kind of hangs them up. And it would be nice if her, one of her last remaining projects after this trilogy of albums she's working on would be a Destiny's Child album with Latoya Latavia and Michelle. Because I feel like the, the original foursome, I feel like we were cheated out of one more great album because the way they were going up, the first album was good. The second album was better. And I think that third album might have been a monster. Even on the wet writing on the raw wall was a monster. I think they could have done better than that, but we were cheated out of that um, because Matthew got rid of those two young ladies. Um, so what do you think? Like, uh, do you would you how would you feel? Would you would you like to see a new uh, Destiny's Child album, or you think or you think let the past be the past and 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 and, it, and that that'll be fine? I actually, you know, because Beyonce was negotiating to do a residency at the Spear in Las Vegas, but that the negotiations for that fell through as of now. 
And it would be nice if she had a Destiny's Child section. And from time to time, she, she would have like Kelly would be there one night or Latoya or Latavia or Michelle. Like, I just I just feel like there's a, still a lot of, even though there's a ton of Beyonce fans, it's like, oh, we love Beyonce. I think there's still a lot of people who are Destiny Child's fans and they would love to see the foursome get back together. So what do you think of that Writing on the Wall album? How do you rank it of all the Destiny Child's album, even with the ones with Farrah and Michelle and all that stuff? Uh, what do you rank the Destiny Child's albums? How did this rank? How do you, how would you rank the uh, Writing on the Wall with all of uh, Beyonce's albums? If you had to put Writing on the Wall, if you take all of Beyonce's albums, solo albums, where would you put Writing on the Wall as a Destiny's Child album? Or maybe that's not your favorite Destiny's Child album. Uh, what, you know, what are your favorite Destiny's Child's album? And what do you think about my idea about them getting together and doing a, uh, a sit down? Like, I don't know if Faye would do that. Like, she's very protective of her brand, of her image. But she's also very surprising. Like, she does things out of the blue. It's like, oh, okay, I didn't see that coming. So maybe, and she films everything. So I just don't think, she doesn't do a whole lot of interviews. So I don't know if she would allow herself to be, she's been very open about a lot of things in her life. But this might be one of the most open things if she just let Latoya and Latavia talk and get their feelings out. Then this, this might this might be the most open, raw thing that she would ever do. I just don't know if she would do it. But if she did, it would be a beautiful thing for the fans. And I think it would be a great thing for their friendship. <laughs> 